What up, tubers? Welcome back to another draft here on Arena. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash newmont for all your magic card needs. Some more Outlaws of Thunder Junction. We'll jump into our pick one, pack one. I don't know what this is. Five mana, five, four menace. When it enters the battlefield, other creatures get minus two, minus two on ten to turn. Discard it, and it gives a creature minus two, minus two on ten to turn. Okay, that seems very good. I will be first picking it. I've never seen this before, and it looks... I mean, it's not your classic bomb, but the potential of it is crazy, and the fact that uh, at its worst, you can always just discard it early to give something minus two, minus two seems really nice. Seraphic Steed's fantastic, one of my favorite creatures in the format. But yesterday we did the green-white deck, and uh, I think I'll avoid it this time. Shepherd of the Clouds, also very, very good, especially if you have the... Um, Mount Saddle Deck, unfortunate accident in the pack, make your own luck also great. Let's become miserable, shall we? Getting past a hell to pay. Might want to just follow the Harvester of Misery up with the uh, Desert's Dew, I think. Uh, yeah, it, it's... I mean, maybe it's not as good as hell to pay, but... It keeps me on black, and I don't even think Hell to Pay is all that good anyways. Plus, in the right deck, like, the Deserts do can do quite a bit of, uh, I mean, a bit of work. Hard Bristle Bandit would be my next choice after those. Actually, I almost want to take the Bandit, but let's just cut off black for now and take the Dew. All right, new good black card I want to take here. Not that I think uh, Bloodseeker is bad, but third pick is not where we want to be with it. I'm still going to take it, as I don't think the rest of the cards in this pack are all that amazing. I mean, Humiliate is good, though that uh, kind of puts me into two colors right off the bat. So, yeah, Bloodseeker's just nice. 2-2 two, two, lifelink for two. Um, and there are a lot of good ways or reasons to either mill yourself or mill your opponent in the format. Generally, you're supposed to mill yourself. When I see people play the Bloodseeker and just immediately target their opponent, uh, I often wonder if they're not understanding or if they actually have a reason to mill them out. But Spinewood's Armadillo as a fourth pick is actually kind of nuts. I think this card is better than Harvester of Misery. Okay, maybe that's a little bit of a stretch, but it's actually pretty close. Similarly, you can pay two mana early on just to get some value out of it, or later on, it's a six mana, seven, seven, reach ward three. Like, fantastic creature. Thunder Salvo as well. That's a good start. And a green black decks are some of my favorite decks in the format. You can just get so much value out of them. And here's one of the better commons you can get for the green black decks. That is the Patient Naturalist. Again, people don't like milling themselves for some reason. They always get caught up in, oh, well, what if I mill all my bombs? Oh, no. It's completely random anyways. And as we've mentioned, you can take advantage of putting stuff in your graveyard. So losing out on a Mourner Surprise. What does this fault do again? Bad constructed fodder. Ah, that's a good start. Very, very good start. Ugh. And a Festering Gulch now to follow that up, unless we want to take the Raven of Fell Omens. But no, this is just an easy desert. I've been pretty happy with the Raven. It actually ends up doing a ton of work. Um, it's at its best in black-red, the crime deck, especially with the 2-mana 1-3 that pings your opponent. But you just get a lot of random value off of this, right? Like any of the deserts that ping, trigger it, that type of thing. My hope is that we open like Villainous Wealth and we get to play some Sultai bomb no uh, nonsense. Let's take the Sulphurus, or not Sulphurus, the Soured Springs here over the Mirage Mesa. Again, just because if we do end up playing blue, this will be much better. The Mirage Mesa is not, not bad, um, but I like taking the Sour. Oh, do all these lands have some quote by Pioneer Journal of Big Raff? Okay, kind of a dead pack here. I guess the Visage Bandit could be okay if we end up on a blue splash. 
Copying the Harvester or copying the Spinewoods Armadillo seems alright. What's this one? Lost a boot in the muck. Get the feeling I'm lucky I got to keep the leg. What is this? Barely dodged a stampede yesterday. Took all night for the dust to settle. Sounds like Big Raph is not a very lucky character. Thornado's pretty good. Always happy to play with this card as there are a ton of flying bombs in the format, which these, uh, most of them just die to the Thornado. Plus, if your opponent doesn't have a flyer, you can just cycle it away. Not much to go on here, although... <laughs> Put target card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. I've actually built a handful of Sultai decks that wants to run this card. With enough self-mill effects, right? And especially in Sultai. This can kind of get around maybe your deck milling something that you would want to draw later on. Decisive Denial is not a bad potential splash card. Yeah, looking like the Sultai value might be exactly the route we're going. I smell like mango now. Just fed baby some mango puree with stuff. Uh, just a pick one of the second pack Cactarantula, I guess it is. Not a very good pack for us. At least not the card I want to be first picking at any rate. Good enough though. Ah, Outcaster Greenblade. Here's one that is real good. Like, three mana 2-2s two that get a search for a basic land are pretty common in Magic. Um, this one is a three mana 1-2, but it searches for a basic or desert. And then it gets bigger for each desert you control, so... It is not hard to make this a 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, you know? In which case, wow. Just very good, very good. He is indeed a mercenary, too. The Archmage's Newt. We got another Desert's do here for us, though. Don't like this one at all. You have to be able to connect with a 2-2 to get the value out of the card. It's not always super easy to do, right? Yeah, there's not really any other choice here for us but the do. We have two Desert's right now. Would be nice to get a few more by the end of the draft. Oh, here's another nice pack. Despawn Outcaster and Aloe Alchemist, both solid. Another Mourner Surprise. Oh, actually, I didn't take the first Mourner Surprise, did I? Uh, I think I like that Bond, uh, the Despawn Outcaster a little bit more in this deck. Trash the Town, I like a lot. Vault Plunderer I like a lot. Is this a good Trash the Town deck? Probably fine. Outlaw Stitcher is also great. Wouldn't be a bad one to uh, splash in addition to some of the other cards we already have. Mirage Mesa also in the pack. I suppose the Vault Plunderer is probably the safest pick, but nah, Trash, Trash the Town does a lot of work. It's not hard to set up either. There's a Badlands Revival. Another really, really nice green-black value card. Return up to one creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and then return up to one permanent from your graveyard to your hand. Card has been fantastic every single time. Really good with, like, the uh, Armadillo and the Harvester as well, right? You discard them early for their initial value, and then you can return them back later. What are we missing right now? I don't have any of the Paladins. The green common 5-4 Trampler that gains 3 life and has plot. What else? Missing my Villainous Wealth, of course. Ankle Biter. Uh... 
I don't really care for this one. Guess I could take the Raven. How many ways do we have to trigger that? One, two, potentially three, four, five-ish. Maybe it's just better to take the Gardener here. If we're going to end up in three color, I suppose this has maybe a little bit more utility. But I'm not particularly fond of playing Oasis Gardener unless you absolutely need the fixing, which isn't always the case, you know? Snakeskin Veil, that's always a decent one to have access to. I don't like this card. I hate this type of card in Limited especially. It's just so cheap and efficient. Same thing with like, uh, take up the shield, but... Just the word hexproof and indestructible are not very fun. Not gonna double splash that, although we could plot it for a single blue. Could splash the rope master, it's also not terrible. Don't think we're playing those. Don't think we're playing conviction, but maybe there's a small chance. 20 gems. So remember, if you have four of a card, any excess you take um, converts into gems if they are rare or mythic. That super late mourner's surprise was also a really nice one. Okay, pack three, let's go. And one of the most busted cards you can get. That is the Railway Brawler. Five mana, five, five, reach trample. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield in your control, put X, one, one counters on it, where X is its power. Oh yeah, and it's also got plot. So you can set this up on turn four, play a creature or two on turn five, and uh, usually just win the game from there. Just win. This one's a little bit good for, for draft. And we have a few different ways to recur it, too, so. This is, yeah. That one wins many a game. What is this? Nexus of Becoming. At the beginning of combat on your turn, draw a card. Then you, may, then you may exile an artifact or creature from your hand. If you do, create a token that's a copy of the exiled card, except it's a 3-3 golem in addition to its other types. have to exile a creature you get a 3-3 version of it I don't think that's actually all that good I mean there are scenarios where it can be good but I don't think that's good I think I'm just gonna take the servant of the stinger here very annoying 1-3 death toucher that can tutor for a card throw from the saddle solid removal I'm a little bit lacking on creatures I would love to get one or two more deserts, but for the most part, this is looking good. Oh, okay, I mean, we'll take the Botanical Sanctum. It's not a desert, which doesn't help our deserts dues, but it helps us splash a little bit more. Actually, do I even need to splash? I don't need to, do I? Decisive Denial and Bandit are, I guess, kind of whatever. We could just take the Voracious Varmint here. Maybe that's better. Maybe just ignoring the blue splash. See, Tumbleweed Rising's totally good. Skullduggery's great. Splash a Lone Shark or something. Yeah, would have been nice to get like one or two more just solid creatures. Like, again, I'm missing out on any of the Beavers and any of the Paladins. And it looks like we are not going to get them at the end. Yeah, that's too bad. Actually, this is not even a good Tomb Trawler deck, is it? Yeah, I'd say we're a few playables short. Hmm. 
This deck's really close to good. And I think it's decent, but it's missing a couple of pieces, it feels like. Where did it go wrong? I don't know. Maybe it's still worth it to splash the bandit. Commando's not bad. Three mana, three, three, or plot it later on, and it comes in as a five, five. Totally fine filler card as well. Actually, the Surveil gives us a little bit of value since we have Graveyard Synergies. Oh, never mind. We'll just replace it with the Plunderer. Much better. Is a clone for your own creatures worth it? I guess it, I think it is in this deck. We have a lot of good top-end cards to copy and even some cheaper cards that are worth copying. All right. This could have been better, but I think it's solid. We have some decent bombs, some decent removal. Totally expect this deck to do well. Six, seven, eight, seven, eight. Let's go with nine green. It's nine green, eight black, two blue. But the armadillo grabs a land, and the... Um, Green Blade grabs a land, so we actually have a little bit more fixing than it might appear initially. Alright, solid deck. Let's run this. Go to round one here of this uh, Thunder Junction draft. Alright, let's go to round one. This is definitely a keeper. Eh, even pretty good, I would say. Needs to find another couple lands, but what we have here is what? We can discard the Harvester, give something minus two, minus two, and then surprise it back if we need. Alright. The Hustle. Yeah, I think I'm happy just to do this. Notably, Skullduggery has to have two targets, so I couldn't just give their creature minus one, minus one. Oh, we even drew the Revival to bring back our... <laughs> I hope they mill me. What? See, this is... I don't know why I know why people do this. I played Forest and a Swamp. They did mill two lands, which actually could be really annoying, but, uh... Like, all they're doing is giving me extra value. Silly kids. It's a lot of deserts. They're going to punch my Vault Plunder or kill it with that. I am very happy. Creature, creature, and a land. Great. So we can get back our Harvester and put the Cactarantula back in hand. We're hoping they play a couple more Two Toughness creatures or something this turn. Whenever an aura you control becomes attached to a non-land permanent opponent, it controls a mana value less than or equal gain control that permanent as long as that aura is attached. Um, how many good ways for that to work out are there? I think I'm going to attack for two here. See what they do. And then what I can do is simply Death Touch punch the Ariette.
Notably, my creatures have three toughness, which gets around the minus two, minus two. Back for more of the Ariet. And we're going to get them pretty good here. <laughs> Sorry for my opponents. Oh, and we drew the Brawler. Sheesh. Still going to be safest just to plot it out instead of hard casting it. I mean, two railway brawlers, perhaps? If they kill it in response, so be it. I don't mind copying another servant or whatever. Well, that's not going to bode well for our opponent. This is going to trigger this servant as well. What do we want to go grab? Oh, I should have left up a black and or a green and grabbed um, snakeskin veil is what I should have done. I actually think I'm gonna grab Thornado here because I don't have like the four mana exile creature, and the only thing I can think that could be problematic is them playing a huge flyer. Um. But I guess if they're not in red, a lot of the flyers there aren't really that relevant. Yeah, that doesn't really matter if they can't get rid of the other one. So let's put the Cactarantula on the battlefield and then we'll put the Harvester back in hand. Ooh, counter unless I pay two. Brutal. I mean, we still have the mourner surprise in hand, so... Wow, okay. They had two different exile effects. Sheesh. Let's get back our harvester. Decisive deny- wait, unless I pay three, I can pay the three. We'll go ahead and plot our outcaster. So I guess they're probably supposed to pump their lifelink or an attack with it since it's going to die next turn anyways means we should also just be chumping since it's the one one would die next turn anyways. All right. So attack for two. Wipe their board with a 5-4 menace. 
and play a 3-3 three, three that draws an extra card. Very good. All right. We are set up for success. Raska, the silencer, ain't gonna cut it here, friend. GG's. All right. Pretty clean. They actually were able to stop the double rhino, which is kind of insane, but... Still had too much value otherwise, and that will lead us off with a win. Good enough hand. Nice. Naturalist was a great draw, given we have the revival already. Is the bandit three or four to plot? It's three. Okay. Turn to a servant. So I guess I'm probably supposed to vault plunder next turn. Oh, that one is so gross. Oh, that's really bad. It's a 2-4 that whenever they cast a creature spell... Um, what does it do? They make a 1-1 one, one, or they make a token that's a copy of target creature. Yeah, oh jeez, and the Baron with it too. So we're going to need to find our Harvester really, really badly. Uh, so I'm going to plot this for now just to get a big creature online next turn. Yeah, we're going to need to find our minus two, minus two. Taking six damage here. That was a really nice curve from the opponent. Pixie bounce like their servant and then replay it or whatever. Oh my lord. Well, good news is Baron only triggers once each turn, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a good draw, too. Actually, you know what? I'm going to plot the um, Bandit and just play out our 5-5. Five five. And hold up the dunes for now. And then next turn I can go Cactarantula plus copy it. That seems fine. I don't know. Maybe I should have just ran out the uh, the naturalist on turn three, and tried to mill our um, mill our harvester asap. Actually, maybe that's what I'm supposed to do next turn. Patient naturalist, copy it with bandit. Mill six towards potentially finding the harvester for giving everything minus two, minus two. I'm going to block like this. And. Yeah, I'm going to do this pre-damage, and if they have a trick, good beats. I could just let my 2-2 die there and play it a little bit safer. But the way I see it is if they have a removal spell, then at least they're not using it. Oh, okay. If they're using a removal spell, they're not using it on the Cactarantula. But it might be too late. Yeah, I'm at 4. And they had a Kervec? Jeez. We had to rip the uh, the harvester there. Harvester might have survived. 
Oh, and it was the next card! Oh, no! That sucks. So, yeah, had I led with Naturalist, I think we would have hit it. Damn. Yeah, their draw was great, and I think I played a little bit wrong, maybe. Good beats. Good beats, good beats. Ugh, where are the creatures here? Do I keep this hand? It's so good with a creature. Okay, I'll risk it. This could be one of those hands that I don't draw a creature and I kind of just lose. But if we do find a creature, then uh, we should be in pretty good shape. Okay. When it's probably on the green-white saddle deck. We have not found a creature yet. Even just any three drop will do. Gold pan. Oh, okay. Naya. Discerning peddler. Cards the gold rush. Oh no, the punishment's starting. In fact, I've drawn three lands in a row now. Jeez Louise. Hearse is really good versus my graveyard stuff. Well, at least it's a spell I can use. <sighs> I'm guessing I'm gonna have to Deserts do the hearse instead of the Entertainer if they... Non-token creatures you control. Okay. Guess we're just gonna Deserts do that instead now. Come on, deck, where are my creatures? That'll work. I guess we want to save the throw from the saddle. Because death touch plus saddle can kill any creature. I don't think I need to kill the entertainer right now. Journey to Nowhere. Worth it. All right, I'm going to go for it and hope they don't have a way to kill an attacking creature. So we're going to hit them for four, draw two cards, and then we can actually Tumbleweed for another four four. It's pretty sweet. Or I could wait and play a six six next turn. No, but I think that's too risky. If I don't make a creature second main phase, they could hit me for way too much with the hearse and their two other creatures. They're opting to eat all my non-permanent cards instead of the permanents in their graveyard, which I don't think is correct.
Throw from the saddle doesn't give trample, does it? No. It's a little bit awkward, but I could sacrifice my servant after casting throw from the saddle and go toot or something. But then I'm losing a 4-6 with... Uh... Oh wait, am I stupid? Is Hearst just any card? It's not permanent? Oh, I'm stupid. Why did I think Hearst was only permanence? I'm crazy. There must be a different card I'm thinking about, right? Okay. Let's chill out for a turn or two. I take back everything I said about my opponent eating my non-creature permanents. Or non-creature cards. <laughs> Bandit, the copy, the sure shot. Alright. They can give it a 1-1 one, one counter for the turn. Our 4-6 death touch doing a good job here. Alright, let's lead off by drawing a card. Pretty nice. Okay. So the hearse is effectively a 6-6 six, six now on attacks, or if they want to, it can become 7-7 seven, seven on blocks. They should probably surveil stuff into their graveyard if they can, right? Yeah, because now the hearse can get a little bit larger. So now it's an 8-8 on blocks. Uh, let's see. I might be able to kill him this turn if they mess up. So let's target their cactus. If they don't crew the hearse in response, they can only block three creatures, so minimum seven gets through, and then I can ping them for the last one. I guess technically the safer play was just to have Outcaster punch the Hound, but then they're more likely to animate the hearse in response. So it looks like we have lethal here. So chump, chump, eat, take seven. Doesn't really matter, right? And the last one... Boop! 
little plunder on your face for one final point. Okay. Two and one now. Two and one on to game four. Yeah, hand looks good. Can the desperate blood seeker go the distance? Skullduggery is always one of those weird things that it's only one mana. You wouldn't expect a trick to do so much work, but it is frequently a two for one, you know? Oh, great draw there, too. So we just need to find any way to interact with our graveyard, ideally, because we have a lot of good self mill here. We are going to plot a Sheriff of Safe Passage. So it gets bigger the number of creatures you have. Oh no, I milled two lands. Actually, milling the desert was kind of annoying since we have both of our dues in hand, but oh well. Bristleback Sentry, don't particularly care about that. Alright, milled some good value there. So if we can find one of our recursion effects, we can get back our Brawler. Well, well, well. What do you know? Let's bring back the Brawler. I don't think I'm going to make any moves here. I think we're just going to pass turn for now. I think my opponent was on a mulligan to five, so... I'm just going to sit back and chill until they go for something else. Uh, that's fine. We can kill that in response. So, shoot the townsfolk. The sheriff's going to enter as a 2-2. Now let's just play it safe. Plot. His next turn we can go Brawler plus Hold Up Veil in addition to any creature. So, I mean, this game's kind of over. Not even kind of over. Just is over. Jeez. Armadillo, huh? Yeah, Brawler is just so stupid good. <laughs> That's annoying, but I'm not going to bother. We want to just keep holding up Snakeskin Veil. Because they might have a, like a punch effect now that we can get out of their hand. The Beave. Sure. Let's see, how do we want to play this? So let's go like this. Attack with everything. <laughs> Alright, so this is going to blow them out. We get to go minus two, or minus three, minus three on one of these creatures. And then Skullduggery to pump up our Bloodseeker to three toughness and finish off their beaver. And that, my friends, is, um, yeah. Pretty freaking great. I might have to cycle my Harvester of Misery, but I'm okay with that. It's fine. Just a casual 14-14 with Ward 3 and Reach. <laughs> uh. Yeah. 
Railway Brawler. <laughs> Once again. The power of the brawl. Three and one now. Good hand. Even has a little bit of interaction if we need. Oh yeah, there it is. Man, Badlands Revival so good. Two land milled. Well, I mean, that's not a bad thing. Hitting a creature or a land was good for us. Because they have the lookout. So I'll go ahead and attack for two here, see if they block. If not, we get to play the Death Toucher. If they did block, we would use the Harvester. And we save the Soured Springs because it can trigger the Servant of the Stinger. Okay, good value there for them. Plotted a commando and they have their own stinger, sure. Ooh. That's pretty spicy. I could do a setup turn here, actually. If I plot the bandit, I can then harvester into bandit to give everything minus four, minus four. It wouldn't kill their um, five, five, but. Well, depending on if they block or not. I guess there's the potential I get blown out if they have a removal spell to kill my... Uh... To kill my bandit in response. In fact, what I might just do here is just play Cactarantula and pass, assuming they do have a removal spell. Oh, they have the Death Toucher plus the Punch. Yeah, well, good thing I waited. Man, if we drew Skullduggery there, we'd blow them out. So I take 9, I go to 6. Pass again, huh? Still pretty good turn overall for us. Guess I'm gonna double block. That's fine. Sure. Get back our tarantula. Let's put the harvester in hand. And I'm actually going to hold the desert to not let them know they're a little bit further behind than they might think. Though it doesn't, the one damage is not super relevant here. Hmm. They plotted, so they do have a removal spell in hand, is what they're saying. Oh, or they're just off it. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, I guess they'd have to chump, right? Just playing out the 3-3 three, three doesn't really accomplish much, because they would take 5 and chump the 6-5, so. Yeah, that was a little bit risky, and I got a little bit greedy with the, uh, with the clone, but I think it was too important to wait out a trick like they had, so. Can you imagine if I had gone for the play? Right, I play the Cactarantula, I go to copy it, they kill both my creatures in response. And then I just have a 2-2, and we lose that. 
So played, played uh, a little bit conservatively, but got rewarded as a result. Sand is fine. We can cycle the armadillo to go grab one of our deserts. That works too. Works too. Still might be worth it to go grab the, another desert with the armadillo, but I guess we'll wait a turn or two, see what we draw. Now it's almost certainly worth it. Ooh, their best play was just plotting and they missed a land drop, huh? Nice draw. Land, saddle. Oh, actually, we did not hit very well there. We hit two non-permanent spells and uh, a land. Oh, they are ramping. But this gives us free reign to trash the town. Make our creature a 4-5 and draw two cards while still holding up Snakeskin Veil. Mm, or I could just do that, which is probably better. Alright, Cactarantula, 3-3 three, three, draw a card. see uh, hmm. I'm gonna attack here and see what they do if they block like this that's fine I mean, ah, this is pretty good use of Desert Stew. Even though they get to draw a card, I guess this is worth. Let's bring back our Armadillo. They're also on Sultai, though, so this could be a more grindy matchup, and if that's the case, I think I want to try to kill them as quickly as possible. I'm scared of something like a Villainous Wealth incoming. Especially if they're running Map the Frontier. Another plot. Hmm. Oh, yes. Nice. Okay, just pass priority. Assuming Ashes. Protect. So I can either trash the town and keep up the pressure, or... Probably just let the trade happen here and uh, plot out our Brawler. We're hoping they don't have another exile effect like the consuming ashes.
Yeah, I mean, I don't expect our brawler to live. But I'm making the play regardless. Do they have the double punch? They do. Oh, wait. Wait. That doesn't turn off abilities, though, does it? No, that doesn't. That just turns it into an O1. <laughs> oh, they messed up there. Okay, yeah, Brawler wins again. Five wins, one loss. Nice. Okay, let us continue. And looks phenomenal. Phenomenal. Pretty good looking curve out here for us as well. I don't think I'm going to bother sandbagging the plunder for the brawler. But we could, I guess. No, I'm okay running it out. Presumably we'll find another creature to play by that turn. Stubborn Burrow Fiend. That's a good one. They can crew it. Or whatever, not crew it. Uh, saddle it whenever. Let's offer a trade. We're hoping they, they're they going to trade with the 3-3 three, three because of our uh, Harvester. But... I mean, the Brawler just might be game over. They have white, so they have access to remove, uh, like exile effects. But if we just even get like one piece of, yeah, I mean, that's the brawler for you. It is a very stupid limited card. And now we are six and one. <laughs> ah, let's brawl our way to, ooh, man. A black source, I would keep this hand, but I don't think I keep it like it is. I guess we have the green blade here. Uh, actually, I like the mill more than the death touch. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the death toucher might be a little bit better to prevent our opponent from attacking, maybe, but... Alright, swamp, please. Beautiful. Let's just go ahead and pop off their bristle right now. Like, if they cast a turn 3 Beaver, for example, that'd be pretty bad for us. Tumbleweed Rising, also kind of annoying. Uh, I guess let's cast the Bandit and get a blue source and then Naturalist afterwards. I'll go ahead and grab a Desert. Sure, I'm, I am A-OK -okay with that. If they're not developing out the board, that's great, because our deck definitely wants to buy more time. Damn. Some actually pretty awkward mills there. Once again, three non-permanent cards. Wow. Very unlucky. That's a pretty sad coyote. Let's attack for two. I'm going to go Servant plus Plot. Attacking into my Death Touch. Alright, do your worst. 
Quick draw would give first strike. Any pump effect is a, is a two for one in my favor. Oh! I mean, that was really good for us too. That was kind of a wasted great train heist and they only made a 3-3, three, three, so... Not even mad about that. I think Bandit on the Plunder's good enough now. Nice. Let's go ahead and kill ourselves two more. Spider and a land milled. Okay. Seven seven reach ward three with snakeskin veil backup. Your move. That is a bunch of cactus folk. Well, I have the uh, snakeskin veil. I'm not even going to plot it. I'm just supposed to sit back here and wait till we draw a creature? I guess so. Like, I could attack with my 7-7, but they just double block it, and then... I guess that's fine. I have to make some kind of move. Oh, triple block I'm okay with as well. So we'll take a 2 for 2. Calamity! Oh my god. Well, the good news is we have a big board, so that doesn't actually do anything right now, but... Yeah, I mean, I do need to find some creatures, otherwise the brawler is simply a 5-5 five, five for 5. Is this even a good attack? They get to pump two of their creatures. Uh, six, eight? Okay. Doesn't have first strike or anything, right? Oh, I mean, I think this is fine. I'll take three damage. Getting the Calamity off the board is most important, and I still have my Brawler, so just need to find some creatures here. I'm going to hold that for now because green actually, so does red, rather. Red has some big flyers like the uh, Stinger Dragon and stuff. Jolene. Fine, I'll cycle this now and see what we draw. Holy crap. I'm gonna take one hit for four then. Alright, glad I didn't block and use my veil. But I need to draw a creature now. Oh my god, are you kidding? I mean, I guess I'm dead. Brutal. They must have another white removal spell. 
Another lasso type card. Oh, Bruce. Okay. Badlands Revival or something off the top, please. <sighs> that keeps us alive because of the lifelink, but... Are you kidding? Dude. 12 lands? 13 lands? Absurd. I played Brawler and I never drew another creature. Crazy. Absolute insanity. Huh? Well, it is what it is. Sometimes you just cannot win. Ay, ay, ay. Wow. I did not expect to lose that game, but hey, wasn't meant to be. I guess we are going to get a final match here. Disgusting, man. Honestly, any creature after the Brawler and we were totally fine. I don't know how many draws that was without finding anything, though. Okay, this hand needs to find one land. That works. Uh, yeah, so we're going to just cycle this for an island right off the bat. As much as I want to grab a desert, I need the untapped land here. And we're going to play with Plunder first, because if they crew the homestead, we can block it. Block and trade, that is. Is a very good card. They hit, damn it. Alright, let's do some setup. Plot, land, pass, and we hope that. They play stuff with four or less toughness this turn. Because we can go Harvester into copy it. Four or less toughness, let's go. Do it. Apply pressure. You know you want to. That's excellent. Come on. Oh, so they're going to pump, attack, and then get a treasure. That's fine. They only get one treasure. Now we say thanks for all the fish, friend. Two five fours with menace. Wipe your board. Yes, I think I like my play. They're going to main, or rather hard cast the irascible Wolverine and not plot it. They hit a long horn or a sharpshooter. But if that's what they play, they have to double block, and it's a two for one, so. It's not even that good if that's what they do. Yeah, that's great for us. Well, let's just attack with both. Could double foretell here, or rather double plot here.
But I guess I'm going to hard cast one of these. And just pass for now. I mean, the Harvesters are lethal next turn, and they have Menace, so... The Gitrog Ravenous Ride. 6-5 Trample Haste. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may sacrifice a creature that saddled this turn. If you do, draw X cards, then put X lands from your hand on the battlefield tapped. Okay, that doesn't matter. We might have lethal next turn. Okay, we no longer have lethal. Bloodseeker. Yeah, so this is an attack with all. They could still lose here, depending on if they... I was going to say, don't block one of my 3-3s. Three trade, 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 trade. They take 5. Kill myself. Two lands gone. We do want to play out the 3-3 three, three this turn. An extra way of lethal next turn. Ravenous Ride. <laughs> Saddle cost is only one. To ride the Gitrog monster, you only have to be that tall. Roxanne. Okay. Still dead here, because they have to double block the Harvester. Nice. Alright, let's go! Oof. That previous loss kind of sucked where we flooded out, but feels good to still get to 7 wins with this deck. I think it was pretty nice. I do think it was missing a couple of components, but overall, I mean, we drew Railway Brawler a ton, and that card is very hard to uh, lose with. The one game we lost, again, we just flooded out, never drew a creature after the fact, but good stuff. I'm glad I spl uh, splashed the Visage Bandit, because it actually did quite a bit of work with the, the fatties, especially with the Harvester of Misery. So, as always, friends, thanks for watching. We'll see you back next time.